Hello, you beautiful people of the internet. It is time to do Linny's story quest. I am excited. The storytelling in Fontaine so far has been absolutely phenomenal. But honestly, I'm just happy to be spending more time with these characters in this phenomenal region with the phenomenal writing we've had so far. Here we go, boys. It's time for me to actually do a story quest. There he is. Linny, the Phantom's Thief's reappearance. Is this the Phantom of the Opera? Here we go. All right. Oh, and it starts with Charlotte. I love Charlotte. I see. So you believe that this warning letter was sent by the Phantom Weasel? A Phantom Weasel? Absolutely. A furry? I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Phantom Weasel never acts as you expect. He must have faked his own death 10 years ago using a body double. Is this now, like the Gray Fox? Sure the guards who worked on his case back in the day are in for a headache, but... However this turns out in the end, the one thing it won't be is boring. Could I'll turn up the voices boring. soon, chat. As a journalist, I'm gonna get a lot of mileage out of this one. Thank you, sir, for your time. Now, whom should I interview next? <gasps> hey! Charlotte! I love Charlotte. Perfect timing. So, the Phantom Weasel's latest warning letter. What are your thoughts? Who is the Phantom Weasel? Yeah, this is the first time we're hearing of this one. Could you clue us in? Huh? Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, this case is from a decade ago. I guess he wouldn't know about it. Dude, I hope Hazel shows up well, in Fontaine You're in and Yan Fei. I'm a professional. The story goes like this. A lawyer and a detective. They need to show up. Wait, here we go. Cutscene, maybe? Ten or so years ago, a phantom thief became active in the court of Fontaine. Known only as the Weasel. Nobody knew his true identity. And the authorities never managed to catch him. This is like the gray fox from Skyrim or from uh, Oblivion. Wow, cool. He sounds like one of those mysterious night burglars that you read about in novels. Precisely. Well, except the part where they actually have a good reputation. Our weasel targeted whatever people held dear. And no one was safe from his predations. He would just as soon steal a necklace from a rich merchant's safe as he would a toy doll given to a commoner child. Dang! Yo, that's messed up. Sounds like an absolute weirdo. I know. The phantom thieves you read about in novels rob the rich to pay the poor. But this guy did not discriminate. He, so he's just a normal thief. He didn't work wonders for his public reputation. Every man and his dog wanted to see him behind bars. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. That's bad PR move Yeesh. as a thief. Stealing so, from the poor. Uh, did they catch him? Um, not exactly. There's a good chance that the weasel would still be at large to this it's day me. if it hadn't been for an accident 10 years ago. A magician named Caesar fell to his death in a botched high altitude escape performance. So Caesar was the thief. When the police went through his personal effects, they found a hoard of stolen loot and gadgets used for criminal activities. And that was how the phantom weasel's identity was revealed to all. Sure enough, thefts in Fontaine went down after Caesar's death. But today, 10 years on, the notorious thief has once again issued one of his warning letters. <coughs> Sorry. And pasted it on the gate of the Opera Epicles for all to see. Wait a minute. This guy's name's Caesar? Was he stabbed? I had to squeeze through the crowd this morning to get a photo as soon as I heard. Here, it's this one. Oh. So, this is the warning letter, huh? Let's see what he wrote. Three days from now, when evening falls, I shall take from you that which you hold most dear at the Opera House. Just as you did to me ten years ago. Your life? Someone's life? This is, without a doubt, a clear declaration of criminal intent. After years of laying low, the Phantom Weasel is back with a vengeance. What once seems like an open and shut case has been blown wide open again. <clears throat> but why has he reemerged now? And what does he want? I sense an epic scoop. Do I love Charlotte so much? I love Charlotte so much. Her design, her personality. Uh oh. If this thief will steal anything that other people value, does that mean even we might be targeted? He's going to steal Paimon. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Aww. But Paimon doesn't want to get kidnapped. <laughs> well, he'd have to go through you first. You would stop him, right? <laughs> okay. The people have spoken. Yes, Paimon, we would stop them. It's clear the very concerned about the Phantom It's our boy! Reasons. Let's see. I've got a photo of the letter, my interview notes. Yep, that should be enough to form the skeleton of my article. Ah, oh, Lenny. Missing, though. Something. Ex 
exclusive. Who should I interview next? I need someone with a more concrete connection to the weasel. The magician. Hmm. <gasps> is that who I think it is? The, ma the magical blood thro flows through his veins. Looks like he's performing some magic. Magic. Magician. Caesar. <gasps> the phantom weasel. That's it. Let's go interview Lenny. Okay. Any excuse to talk to Lenny. The phantom thief Caesar was a magician too. And what do phantom thieves and magicians have in common? They both have an air of mystery about them. Perhaps there's a connection there. Are you serious? What sort of a deduction is that? <laughs> oh, relax. My journalistic instinct tells me. Do we that get to keep the letter? New story is beckoning. Let's go. No time for delay. Wait, let me turn my music volume up. My dialogue volume up. Skirt, skirt. Liddy! Wow, Mr. Magician. How did you know which card I picked? Oh, it's simple. Come closer and I'll let you in on my secret. Aww. Magicians have a special skill called telepathy. Okay. Which means we can read other people's okay. minds. Okay, all right, buddy. Really? Then... What am I thinking now? There we go, David. Well, first you need to relax. Because I can see that you're clenching your fist in your mind. As if to say, no, I mustn't let him guess it. Aww. <laughs> Poor David. And now you're getting a little flustered. You're trying to Yo, find he's a way to, him. Mind, to think of nothing at all. But the more you try to hide a secret, the easier it'll come out. Foreshadowing? You snuck out from home today, didn't you? You told your family a little lie so you could come out and play. Now, now, that's not a good habit. Y you can tell? Uh, oh, boy. You really can read my mind. This guy's going to grow up to have magician phobia for the rest of his of life. Of course. Oh, and that's the end of my performance. You should really be heading home. Remember to apologize to your family, all right? They must be worried about you. Uh, all right, got it. Bye, Mr. Magician. Is the volume better, chat? There they are. Hello, sir. Hello, monsieur. Can I join the Fatui, please? Uh, hey, Lenny. Why, hello. We meet again. Are you looking for me? What's the situation? Remember, we left Lenny on interesting terms, so I wonder if that's going to carry over into this. <laughs> Telepathic. Oh, please. You didn't believe that spiel, did you? The power of telepathy is quite beyond me. I'm sure that child would beg to differ. Seemed like you were right on the money. Aww. That was nothing I more than Charlotte a little so trickery. Much. I made an educated guess based on his micro-expressions. That, plus the fact He's that like he an was astrologist. the here without <laughs> his parents, <laughs> and he looked as guilty as sin. He made it easy for me. You guys, on the other hand... Hmm... Let me guess. Uh, don't tell me you're here for the phantom weasel, are you? No, we're here to weasel your phantom, brother. Wow. I'm sorry. I didn't Cut mean that. Uh, is this more of your trickery at work? Wait, really? <laughs> no, no trickery this time. It was pure luck. His warning letter's been the talk of the town, so I figured that maybe you were asking around about that. Bingo! I plan on writing a column reporting on the latest news about the phantom weasel. So, Lenny... What are your thoughts? Is he going to try to assassinate the Hydra Archon? Hmm. To be honest, it makes me angry. It puts a bad name on magicians. Angry? Why? You read his letter, right? The Phantom Weasel claims he's planning something in three nights' time at the Opera House. That's the night I'll be performing there. Oh, shoot. Is he going to try to kill Lenny? Take one magician, ah, take another? <gasps> Wait a minute. You don't think he's after you, do you? Well, if he is, then his warning is clearly a direct challenge to me personally. And if he's not, then it's still going to be a huge headache for me. Yeah, this... Man, Lenny cannot catch a break with his shows. Someone got murdered in the last one. A, a previous dead magician is threatening the next one. The mere mention of the weasel's name is enough to scare people off. So once the contents of that letter get out, barely anyone will be showing up to watch my show. But I've been preparing for this for a long time. I'm not about to let him ruin my big day. This leaves me with only one choice. I have to expose the Phantom Weasel's identity before the show begins. And we can help you. Really? So what you're saying is, 
We might get to see a live duel between a famous magician and an infamous thief. Wow, this has exclusive written all over it. Charlotte, this is... <laughs> Charlotte. To be honest, I'm not sure if I'll emerge the victor. The Phantom Weasel is a notorious crook, infamous for his inscrutable methods. Dude, Linny's design is so sick. You're being far too modest, Linny. I think your magic tricks are even more inscrutable than those of a thief. Thanks Aww. for the compliment, though I have to say I don't care much for the comparison. Uh -huh. A lot of people liken magicians to thieves because we both have the ability to make things disappear without the person noticing. But there's an important difference that these people overlook. Magicians bring things back. Allow me to demonstrate with a quick magic trick. Here, I have a flower. Just an ordinary flower that was picked not long ago. Watch it carefully now. Three, two, one. <gasps> oh, it's gone! Where'd it go? That's the question. Where did it go? Therein lies the in my ear? between us. Thieves make precious things disappear, but only magicians make them reappear. That's what I was saying. Can you make my sister reappear? <laughs> anyway. If I could now invite you all to check your clothes, there might be a surprise in there somewhere. A surprise? <gasps> Let me see! <laughs> Traveler's face. To theft. True. And don't worry, I didn't take offense. I just wanted to take the opportunity to perhaps change some of the preconceived notions you might have about magicians. Okay. Since Caesar's death, a lot of people associate magicians with criminality. It can be quite frustrating. I can imagine. Um, coming back to your trick just now, might I presume that you are well versed in floral symbolism? For example, magicians often use rainbow roses in their flower related performances to represent passion and romantic encounters. But you used a loomy do spell, which, if I'm not mistaken, allude to separations. I'm curious to know if there was any deeper meaning behind this choice. Yo, Charlotte, reading him like a book, Pots Champ? Impressive knowledge. It's no wonder you're such a successful Charlotte journalist. is pretty smart. But I'm afraid I don't know the first thing about floral symbolism. I'm just in the habit of using Lumidu spells in my magic. It sounds like something I should look into, though. Hmm. I'll buy myself a copy of Fontaine's Floral Language Facts floral when I have symbolism. some time. symbolism. But it'll have to wait until this phantom weasel business is behind us. Why'd she bring that up, Jack? Well noted. In that case, this brings us to the end of our interview. I, for one, am looking forward to the final showdown between you and the thief. Does this quest unlock after the first Archon quest? Please feel free to get in touch to update me on any further developments. Otherwise, I will of course see you at your show in three days' time. But let's hope the phantom weasel is caught by then. I hope we address the tension then. If there's nothing else, uh, I'll be off. You've Between us and Lenny. Here, and I've got no time to lose if I want to write that exclusive piece. I'll see you all later. I love, I love when Genshin quests build and address other things that have already happened. You know what I mean? Versus like ignoring it. Bye, Charlotte. I love you. I miss you already. So, uh, Lenny, are you gonna tell us how you did that flower trick now? <laughs> I'm afraid that's my little secret. Magicians are entitled to their secrets. But Paimon's really itching to know how it's done. He told us the other one. You and feel it too, right? So itchy. <laughs> so itchy. The Phantom Weasel. I'm sure you'll be able to handle him. <laughs> Not so itchy then, huh? <laughs> well, since you're so concerned, how would you like to serve as my temporary magician's assistant and help me investigate? I would love to. Are we going to address what happened the last act? We left like... Not trusting each other and angry at each other. Magician's assistants? Oh, that sounds fun. Assistants are technically magicians too. Also, it'll bring us one step closer to figuring out how that darn trick is done. Shall we go for it? <laughs> Paimon, we'll help you with your investigation. Excellent. Thank you for putting your trust in moi. Was he angry at us? No, Traveler was angry at him for misleading him. The first thing we need to look into is who Caesar really was. 
If he truly was the Phantom Weasel, that means that the Weasel is dead, and whoever wrote this warning letter is just a copycat criminal. But if he wasn't the Weasel? Hmm. Well, that'll make things more interesting. It would mean that the Weasel lives, and he's been laying low all this time in some corner of Fontaine. It's Frimene! And if we're investigating Caesar, his fiance Gemma is a good place to start. Word is that she visits the cemetery often, oh. so I asked Lynette to wait for her there. Oh, no. We should make a move. Let's go and rendezvous with Lynette. Okay. Fresh fruit, than Gift of parting. A flower accessory given away by Linnae at his magic shows. It is an arrangement of which symbolizes parting. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, my only thing is we left Linny after Act 2. That's going to go underground. Okay, I guess we can. Traveler was upset that there was tension there because they were Fatui and they never told us. And so Traveler's trust was broken a little bit. And I really hope this addressed that at some point. Because I really, I just feel like that's good storytelling when you, when you touch on other story elements that have already it's happened. Wind. It's okay if it doesn't, but I hope, I hope it does. All right, back to the graveyard again, man. Time to cry again. <laughs> Ah, shoot. Here we go. Let me pick a mint for the road. Hello. Yoo-hoo. You took your time. <laughs> Hi, Lynette. Hi to you, too. Sorry. I bumped into the Traveler and Charlotte en route, and we ended up chatting for a while. It's been a while, Lynette. We're working as Lenny's temporary assistants in the investigation of the Phantom Weasel. It's been three days since I last saw her. Thank you. It's good to have you helping. Oh. So, what's the situation? Have you seen Gemma? No. Nope. I've been here a while, and she still hasn't shown up. How bizarre. Maybe it was bad intel. Or maybe she sees well, you guys. we won't get anywhere by standing around waiting. Traveler, Paimon, let's go ask around. Oh, it's, it's Gemma. It's Gemma. I, I called it, boys. I'm calling it now. Hello, sir. Would you like an Excuse interview? Excuse me, good sir. Do you by any chance know a Gemma? Ain't no way we're integrating. We're we're interrogating these people who are mourning their their past ones. Gemma, you mean Caesar's fiance? Sure, I do. What's this about? I'm just trying to get a hold of her because I need her help with something. I heard she comes here a lot. Yeah, she does. <sighs> Poor thing. It's no secret why either. She's heart sick. Ever since Caesar passed away, she's been coming here once every week to clean his grave. Oh. Often she just sits there in front of his headstone, lost in thought. Sometimes she talks to herself. Dane, man, I could not imagine the pain to love someone so dearly and not to get really deep chat and to lose them and to be stricken with that grief after like finding your like one. I asked her what she was doing once. She said she wanted to speak to him again. She knows he's gone and can't hear her from the grave, but she just likes to spend time there, telling her fiancé all about how her life is going. Oh. And she's been doing this ever since Caesar passed away? Oh, so ten years. Wow. Their love must have been really strong. Of course it was strong. It was in Paris, Fontaine. Oh, love is strongest in Fontaine. I'll bet. Um, sorry. Caesar's reputation fell apart after his identity was revealed, so no one else visits his grave. Gemma's the only one who still thinks about him after all these years. Oh. I don't know if the mind lives on in the waters after death, but if it does, I'm sure Caesar must be grateful to have someone who remembers him fondly. Oh. If I'm honest, I think this is all so unfair to poor Gemma. Her fiancé was a low-life crook. He doesn't deserve someone like her. Or... Anyway... All of that said, she's running later than usual today. Normally, she'd be sitting in front of his grave by now. I wonder if she's okay. Jim is the thief. Well, that's everything I know. I'm afraid. either the resurgence. Might have more luck asking some other people. All right. Well, thanks for sharing all of this with us. Was Lenny here the whole time, or around. am I crazy? Did he just appear there? I just hope she'll be able to move on one day. Am I losing my mind? I think I'm losing my mind, chat. It's the love in the air. Oh. Did you hear the news? They're saying the Phantom Weasel's back. Why are you guys discussing this over a grave? How convenient. 
Paris, the city of love. Damn, I wish French people were real. <laughs> they are real. You're kidding. Wait, isn't he dead? I don't know anymore. All sorts of news flying around nowadays. I can never tell what's true and what isn't. Oh, I love the character design in Fontaine. But what if? Just hypothetically, I mean. What if this weasel's the real deal and Caesar was framed? Called it. Seriously, ten years ago on the day it all went down, I said to myself, you know what? This guy's been set up. The Caesar I knew was a good guy. He gave balloons to children on the street for Pete's sake. Okay, two. What, are we supposed to believe that he was a balloon thief or something? Give me a break. Two themes I'm thinking of right now, oh, chat. I'll please. tell you in a second. Weren't you the one cursing his name to high heaven when the police announced the news? You were all, oh, that gosh darn lousy son of a, oh, you think you know a guy, or words to that effect. Wait, did I That's say that? music. Hmm. I don't seem to recall. Called out. Sorry to interrupt. Hello there. Sorry for disturbing you, but I couldn't help but notice you were discussing the phantom weasel. We're actually quite interested in this topic as well, but we're struggling to get to the bottom of it. Do you think you could spare a moment to tell us a little bit about Caesar? Yo, we're getting distracted by this god flu in the background. Papa. You've come to the right people. Yep. I was there. Back when Caesar used to perform magic tricks on the street. He was a great magician. The best trick I ever saw him do was pop a transparent balloon, only for a whole bunch of doves to fly out from the inside. That's impressive. I was right up close and didn't blink or look away once. But for the life of me, I still don't have the faintest clue how he Lenny pulled probably it off. does. Really incredible stuff. I saw him perform too. He always used to bring some gifts along for the kids who came to watch his show, and he'd hand them out after he was done. Aww. Sometimes he even got the kids to write their wishes down, and then he'd make the items on the wish list appear in his next show. Huh. He doesn't sound like such a bad guy. But after he died, there were also rumors that he used the wish list to find out what was precious to people, with the intent to steal it later. How's... As I'm sure you know, the Phantom Weasel would steal just about anything from anyone. Whatever the case, now that the Weasel is back, Caesar's become a hot topic once more. I bet Gemma must be pleased. If Caesar's name gets cleared, maybe it'll finally give her some solace after all this time. No, oh, speak of the devil. That's her over there. If you've got any more questions about Caesar, she's definitely the one to ask. Okay, she's... E there's two options. There's two ways this is going. She's either taking up his mantle because he was, like, framed or something, or she's been the thief the entire time. And the the Caesar took the fall. And she's been guilt-stricken over it. So that's Gemma. That's my guess. Uh, is it just Paimon, or does it look like something's wrong? Wait... It looks like she's injured. Come on, let's see if she's okay. Oh, the music in Fontaine is so beautiful. Uh, hi there. You're Gemma, right? Look at her blue eyes. Who's asking? Fair. Don't be afraid. We mean no harm. Also fair. It looks like you're injured. How bad is it? Thanks for your concern, but you didn't answer my question. Fair. Who are you, and what do you want with me? My name is Linny, and this is my sister Lynette. My name's Paimon, and this here's the Traveler. We're investigating the Phantom Weasel. Oh, she didn't say Paimon is Paimon. No! No! The Weasel posted a warning letter this morning. If he still lives, that means that Caesar was falsely accused. You knew Caesar better than anyone else. So if you're willing, we'd love to hear what you think about all this. <sighs> I promise you can trust us. We won't hurt you. In fact, we'll do all we can to keep you safe. I... I never believed that he was the weasel. Huh. I suspected as much. Okay, so going back 10 years, do you remember anything strange in the weeks leading up to the accident? Did Caesar have a falling out with anyone, for instance? No, not that I know of. <laughs> Got it. All right. What was with that Sorry grunt, Lynette? You. If you don't have any more questions, please leave. I want to be alone with him. I can lie in the grass and listen to what she says. Her dearly departed. Paimon, crawl up there. 
army style. Judging by the look on her face, there's definitely something fishy about her. She's lying. She definitely knows something. Perhaps she definitely does. Perhaps she simply doesn't trust That's us. That's fair. We're just a bunch of strangers who showed up and started questioning her about things that happened a whole decade ago. It makes sense that she'd be wary around us. In any case, I doubt we'll get any further here, so let's call it a day. Meet me outside Hotel de Boer tomorrow, and then we'll start the next step of our plan. Yes, sir. Yes, Lenny, sir. Fatui, sir. All right. To the hotel, brothers. Time will now speed up. Uh, poof. The next day on the music. Hello, Lenny. Let's go catch ourselves a magician. Over here. While we drink wine and smoke a cigarette. And kiss under the moonlight. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm done. I've had her follow Gemma and see if we can make any inroads with her. They should be at a cafe right now. Ooh, I feel like Lynette would make a good spy, to be honest. Still, I don't think that Gemma's likely to open up to us. So, we need a contingency plan. She is Fatui, after all. They, they do do the spy in. What should we do? Where should we start? Today, we'll be looking into a guy named Lorenzo, Caesar's former pupil and assistant. When Caesar passed away, all the stolen goods discovered in his home were confiscated and returned to their rightful owners. But Lorenzo was the Ooh. only one privy to all his magic secrets, Lorenzo. and he inherited his craft. Isn't there a Muppet who does Before magic whose name is Lorenzo? Lorenzo? The next big magician Lorenzo or something? His fame surpassing even that of his master, and it made him very wealthy. He's since left the magic scene, though, and these days, he's a wealthy businessman with his fingers in a lot of different pies. I Gonzo! I a lot of strings, but I managed to get him to agree to a couple of drinks with me. Be warned, though. I hear he's got a hair-triggered temper. We'd best be careful. Oh, it's okay. We have experience with emotionally compromised people, don't we, Paimon? <laughs> Half of Tame Ads. <laughs> Time to give someone else therapy. Here we go. Paimon, get ready. Oh. Oh, the music in here is so nice. You neglected to mention that you were bringing two other people with you. I'm sorry. Why? Your voice actor is... My apologies. These two are my assistants. When they heard that I was meeting with the former magic maestro himself, they begged and pleaded with me to bring them along. Um, and if it's no trouble, a couple of autographs would really make their day. No, you asked for that after, man. Oh, forget the pleasantries. Just sit. I like Lorenzo already. I don't care if he's a bad guy. Dude, look how... Get a load of this guy. Forget the pleasantries, he says, but... He looks pretty happy about Lenny stroking his ego. I only agreed to meet since Dude, we're both so good. magicians. Do me a favor and cut to the chase. I have more important things to do than drinking. More important than drinking? What's more important than... <clears throat> I'm sorry. <laughs> Much obliged, sir. As it happens, the matter I want to address is also related to magic. Yesterday morning, a warning letter from the Phantom Weasel appeared on the entrance to the Opera House. He claims to be planning something for the same evening that I'm scheduled to do a magic show there. As such, I believe that I may well be his target. Poor Lenny can't catch a break, this man. To ensure that my show can go ahead as planned. Naturally, any investigation into the weasel starts with a few questions about Caesar, who... What is there to investigate? Caesar was the weasel, and he's been dead for ten years. So what if some sick creep thought it'd be funny to write a warning letter? It changes nothing. Are you trying to tell me you actually bought it? Please, sir, no need to get so worked up. I do concede that a copycat is but one possibility. Yo, time to... Bust his knees. Possibility? It's a fact, Linny. Look, my patience is limited, so listen carefully while I'm still willing to put up with you. <laughs> Damn, this guy! The weasel is dead. Period. Everyone knows that, so do yourself a favor and quit this investigation. It'll lead you nowhere. Look, if this affects your magic show in any way, I will personally compensate you for any losses. Yo, thank you. That's oh, kind. sir, I'm... Honored, really. But this isn't about finances for me. My pride Period. as a magician is what's at stake here, Lorenzo. <laughs> Copycat or not, this person has thrown me the gauntlet, and I must meet their challenge head on. Your pride? <laughs> Don't mince words with me, boy. Just tell me what exactly are you seeking to do. 
Dude, his voice actor. I want to find out the Phantom Weasel's true identity. I have to know for myself what really happened ten years ago. What would that accomplish? And what do the events of ten years ago have to do with you, anyway? Look, you of all people should know that a magician never reveals their secrets. And in any case, dead men don't talk. So, if you really care about your magician's pride, then you'll forget about Caesar and move on. Dude, I love his voice so much. Uh, uh, uh oh, this is getting awkward. First time Linny's been out of words to say. Renzo? Is that? Oh, it is you! <laughs> I know that big, uh, booming voice anywhere. What's up, my man? Wanna grab a drink with me? <laughs> Yo, this guy's turnt! Another day, I'm busy. Aw, oh, come on! You can't be all business all the time. You know what they say! Live fast, die! Young. <laughs> you gotta learn how to kick back and relax once Yo, my life. guy's sloshed at 8 a.m. Did the is the party starting dangerously earlier or has it gone dangerously late? If I wanted your life, it's eight in the advice, morning. I'd ask for it now. Get out of my face and go be drunk somewhere else. Sorry, my good sir. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Oh, hey, um, Edmondo. He and I are business pals. We work together a bunch of times. Is this Venti in disguise? This is your first time meeting him. Oh, he's always like this. <laughs> Foul mouth and hard nose. Never heard a kind <laughs> word out of this guy the whole time I've known him. I love this guy. Uh, and he wonders why he can't get a girlfriend. Despite being, <laughs> what? Pushing 40, 30, something. Anyway, point is, a lot older than when he first got rejected by the girl he was into. And who was it? He's still into, from what I hear. It's the, it's the, it's the girl. Shut up and get out it's of the my widow. face. Another word out of you and you can forget about doing business with me ever again. Do I make myself clear? <laughs> uh, sorry, I may have had a little too much to drink <laughs> dude edmondo's right, so, great uh, I'm, I'm gonna leave don't work too hard <laughs> <laughs> please show up in future things man someone give that guy vision I give that guy an animal vision a move as well if you really want to investigate this linny be my guest who were you in love with mister but if nothing good comes of it don't say i didn't warn you Lorenzo shaping up to be the bad guy with his voice and demeanor. But hopefully that's a red well, herring. That Otherwise it's too to obvious. Pieces in a rather spectacular fashion. Any thoughts? There's something strange about him. Totally. And what was all that about compensating you for your life? Holy! Paimon what? being... Someone you just met make an offer like that. Paimon being giga-brained right there. That's a great point. He's gotta be hiding something. And not like Gemma. She was a little suspicious, but this guy's definitely covering something up. I think so, too. We need to look into Lorenzo more closely. With my arms around his waist in a slow dance? <clears throat> that guy Edmondo seems to know a look. thing or two about him. He only just left. <laughs> let's see if we can catch up with him. I'm sorry. Yes, let's go kidnap the drunkard and interview him. We are the Fatui. Bum, ba -da, bum, 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 bum. Ace Detective Paimon, put on the glasses. Put on the mustache. We need Py Pylock? Sherman? You get the idea. More Edmondo. Yo, sign me up. Oh, he's talking to the flowers. Is he Hunover? Is he Hunover already? You okay there? Uh, who are you? Oh, it's you guys. Don't worry about me. I must have had one too many. Uh, I just need to ride it out. I say way too much back there, didn't I? Yeah, I nearly talked myself into complete financial ruin. <laughs> Note to self, no more drunken chats when Lorenzo's around. So he was serious about threatening to cut you off? Ugh, Paimon knew he was a bad egg. Hey, 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 keep your voice down. Don't go prying into Lorenzo's personal affairs. <laughs> Bad things happen to people who ask too many questions or make an enemy out of him. What kind of bad things? Don't even ask. 
I'm sorry. Uh, I'm gonna have to cut this conversation short. I'm not crossing that line again. And take it from me, trouble with Lorenzo is one thing you don't need in your life. You some flare up back there. I don't know what you said to him, but clearly it touched a nerve. I wonder if he killed the magician to get with the girl. That's not a good sign. You're, you're too young for this. And don't get in over your head. I'm leaving. And that's why this guy's rich, is because he stole a bunch of stuff, maybe? And there he, he goes. <sighs> what do we do now, Lenny? And if this guy's a magician, too, then that means he would be good at stealing stuff. Shh. I think we're being watched. Someone was listening in to our whole conversation. Secret agent, man. Don't say anything and don't look back. Any altercation in the city will attract the guards. We better take this elsewhere. That guy had a fun fun day recording those lines. I wonder if he was in character, if it was method acting. Down two bottles of wine before going through his dialogue. I am an actor, a, a method actor. You who? Lenny? Are we about to get in a fight? You followed us a long way. Why don't you come out and introduce yourselves? Oh! So you're Linny. And where's your sister? Ain't she with you today? Smooth face Pacino! It's Al Pacino! Save us the trouble. I loved you in the Godfather. For us. Let's not drag this out. Is this the mafia? Simon doesn't like the tone of your voice, mister! Who sent you, huh? I like how she goes behind Traveler to talk smack. <laughs> Save your questions, missy. You ain't gonna need answers where you're going. Capiche? Yo, the y'all y'all rolled up on the wrong man. <sighs> Looks like we can't avoid this fight. Now I'm not the strongest fighter, so I hope you're ready to back me up. Don't worry, we got this. Uh, my traveler's level sixty. <laughs> oh, it's me! Step right up. Let's see if Lenny can just do it. Here we go, boys! It's time for a magic show of death. Wait, oh, hello? This guy's cracked. Okay. Cat of death. Bow of death. Oh. Curses. They're tougher than we thought. Yeah, I am. Vision wielders are always trouble. Intimidation ain't gonna work like it did on the lady. Painter De Niro? Is this Robert De Niro and Al Pacino? <laughs> are all these. <laughs> Come on, let's scram. What is this? Hey, wise guy! <laughs> We could catch him probably. Godfather As Four. They said just before they left, something about intimidating someone else. Sounds like they just wanted to rough us up as a scare tactic, and they've already done it to someone else. But who? Could it be Gemma? You're right. She was injured when we saw her yesterday, and she acted like she had something to hide. Maybe she was too scared to tell us the truth because those guys had threatened her. Hmm. Well, if that's the case, she should be more willing to open up to us when she learns that those thugs won't be bothering her anymore. Not when we murder them. Let's head them. back to the cafe and see if we can get any information from her. They can't bother us. They can't bother her when uh, they're six feet under the ground, brother. Can I just teleport to the cafe? Oh. Time to grab a cup of coffee with the beautiful lady. Hello, ma'am. I heard you are single. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's... It's terrible. I ride on wind it's and so bad. <laughs> skirt, skirt. Uh, yeah. Is she having tea with Lynette? Oh, wait. Or coffee. Co you guys having coffee at 9 p.m.? Jeez. You all have a problem. Gemma? They're crunching at each other. You again. What is it this time? You're, wait, Loki, though, her drip is awesome. We just ran into the men who've been threatening you, and we gave them a taste of their own medicine. So, you can relax now. We're here to protect you. Oh. What? Why? I didn't tell you anything. Why would they come after you? <laughs> Sounds like they're no strangers to you. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. I know them all too well. 
and I hate them with every fiber of my being. Okay. It's been ten long years. And still, every time I try to look into Caesar's death, they show up and warn me not to do anything stupid. Oh, shoot. Dude, I love Gemma so far. The solemn widow who wants to avenge her dead husband. How do I know I can trust you? Do you really think you can get to the bottom of it all? And why are you doing this? Not to mention her outfit is immaculate. I'm afraid I can't reveal all the details just yet, but I can promise you this. I will expose the Phantom Weasel's true identity. Why can't you reveal all the details, Lenny? Because you see, this is a personal matter of the utmost importance. I give you my word. Trust me. <sighs> okay. How can I help you? Buy me a cup of coffee. I've heard that Caesar Latte. used to have a magic workshop where he kept a lot of his personal effects. Oat milk. If possible, I'd like to take a look at them. Do you know where it is? The Fleuve Sand. But the place was sealed up by the police after his death, and... No one's been there since. Wait, is Lenny just trying to get some new magic tricks? This guy! I also know that the Fleuve Sandra is dangerous territory. Lots of hostile groups lurking around. If you're serious about going there, please be careful. Oh. Understood. Lynette, you stay here and take care of Gemma. Don't let her come to harm. <sighs> Got it. But if I'm staying here, I'm ordering dessert. I love Lynette so much. I love Lynette. <laughs> I mean, bon appetit. But stay sharp, too. They're likely to come for you while I'm away. Okay. All right. Power saving mode off. I'll start taking this more seriously now. She's so real for that. She really is. With me here, nothing will happen. Oh. Dude, Lunette? I would not want to fight Lunette in a fight. Whatever She's very do, intimidating. Please be careful. Thanks, Jimmy. If anything happens to you because you're investigating Caesar, I'll never be able to forgive myself. Mom, she's she's already like our mother. <laughs> I'm crying. I'm crying. Wait, it's huh? Huh? Where is the? Is it? Is it in the garden? Oh, is it underground? 170 meters. I'm assuming we're down here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's time to go hang out with the teenage mutant ninja turtles. Wee oui, wee, oui. mon ami. All right, chat. I'm going on an adventure. To solve some crime and learn some magic tricks. Obey. What's up, dudes? Oh my gosh, I love the design down here so much. Hello, it's just me, Shinha. Oh, is this a secret entrance? Is it gonna be a domain? If Gemma gave us the right location, then the workshop should be right nearby. Huh. Looks like these boxes are blocking the entrance. Let's shift them away first. Yo, Lenny, move the boxes. It looks like no one's been here in a long time. There we go. It should be just down here. Ooh. Enter the magic workshop. Okay. Squad rolling up. Here we go, boys. It's time to clinch our butt cheeks and learn some magic. Or perform some magic. Or investigate criminal activity. Yoo-hoo. Oh, look at the design. Oh, and the music, too. This is quite ominous. Oh! Okay, listen! It was very hard to tell that that was there. I turned the corner! Okay, okay, listen. Everybody makes mistakes. So this Ooh, was Caesar's Caesar. Caesar. Yo, Caesar was... I didn't know there, there's this much That's money in magicry. Magic Magicianry? That's a little spooky. <laughs> what was that? Oh, is this one of Caesar's gadgets? Uh, Who's the little guy? Guess we must have triggered some sort of device. Attack the puppets when they pop out to secure them in place. Wind Strider. A door. Protected by Jack in the Boxes. Interesting. Look at all the balloons. Can I take one home? What's up, guys? Surely you're friendly. Surely. Wait, wait, hold up. Does Lenny's resonance change these? And voila. Does that mean it does more damage? Okay, anyway. You know what? Obey. Screw this. Chandun! Let her rip, brother! Ladies and gentlemen, the man, the myth, the legend, the exorcist. 
all the way from Leo A. Chad Yoon! Look, the doll in the box is glowing. Does that mean it gives us money? Oh, am I supposed to follow it with my eyes? I think I'm supposed to follow it with my eyes and choose the right one. It, it, was, it was this one. There's something written on the card on this doll. Let's take a closer look. The wish list? I'd like a little dove. I want a robot with cool powers. You need your parents' permission to own a pet. And you also need to take good care of it. I have brought a fluffy toy dove for you. Fluffy toy dove for you this time. If you're ready to own a pet, I'll make a real dove appear for you next time. Oh! Giving a gift to a child and being responsible with giving the gift? Based. You know those people who give, like, goldfish to, like, three-year-olds, man? That's... That's... <laughs> It's not ethical. <laughs> you know that goldfish is going to be dead in a week. <laughs> I want a bucket of fried chicken that never runs out. Yo, based? I'd like a new bag. There's no such thing as fried chicken that never runs out. Just there's no seeing, such thing as children who never grow up. Also, eating too much fried chicken is bad for you. Make sure to pair it with something healthy, like a salad, all right? Yo, is that wish sponsored by KFC? I want a bucket of fried chicken that never runs out. Yo, that's... That kid is based. Kentucky Fried Chicken, specifically. <clears throat> KC, please, give me the give me the glider wings. I, I had the redemption code. I just didn't redeem it in time. Please, KFC, Colonel, have mercy. Uh, these magic boxes are moving. Oh, what the music one of them in here. From the rest. Okay. Let's investigate. This one. It's you. I won. That is very easy. A very easy puzzler for the Johnster. I wish my parents would get back together. You and me both, sister. Okay, no, I'm joking. I wish for grades, good grades. I wish for my little sister to have a normal life free of danger. No, I want you to know that you can always share your troubles with me, children. But some wishes need more than magic to make them come true. They need the power of your hard work. I wish you the best of luck and hope that all your wishes will come true, Caesar. Oh. Yo, Caesar's freaking a magician and a therapist. Hey, yo. And a life coach. Okay, watching that one. You can't get away from me. What the? With my boy. When do we get to go to your wedding, Uncle Caesar? I want to watch your shows even when I'm grown up, Uncle Caesar. Do you have to go on tour? Can't you stay here with us, Uncle Caesar? Oh my, this round of wishes rather exceeded my expectations. The wedding will be held very soon, and don't worry, you'll all be invited. The tour has already been scheduled, but I'll definitely be back. And you'll always be welcome at my shows if you like magic. Did he die before his wedding? Wait, am I... Am I st oh, stuck in the box. Oh, through here? Okay, this is getting a little, little spookier. Dude, the music. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! Hello, if there's a spooky clown in here, I would like to leave. Just say so. Died before his wedding. The music. That's weird. Have we reached the end already? Is this a magician's end or a magician's beginning? There's nothing here. Uh, maybe this was a wasted trip. Lenny, what are you looking at? This place seems a little too ordinary for a magician's workshop. There's a distinct lack of mystery. We've Which makes it more mysterious. On the way here. Hmm. I'm starting to wonder whether Caesar built this whole place as one big elaborate magic contraption. If so, then there must be more to this place than meets the eye. Maybe a hidden room somewhere. Wait, if there's a lack of mystery here, doesn't that make it more mysterious? Thus, it there isn't a lack of mystery? Aha. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I just move this book, then hopefully... And... Presto. I love Pesto. A secret passageway! How did you know? Magicians, man. Uh, I'm a magician too. And money. And apparently, great minds really do think alike. Looks pretty big inside. Let's head in and take a look around. Those two gamba gems are mine, brother. <laughs> He's dead, man. He won't use them. <clears throat> anyway, I'm sorry, Caesar. Oh, it's battle time again. Hello, friends. <laughs> That's the wrong person. Five button five. Time for a show! <laughs> Death by cat and hat! Dr. Seuss would be proud. <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. It's time for uh, me to 
separate your souls from your bodies if you have one. Allez voir, mademoiselle. And we get paid. Man, the design in these domains is so sick. Oh, I thought we were going to climb through the clockwork. Yo, was this guy a multi-millionaire, man? This is, this is crazy. I like the little mysterious music, too. Okay. Excuse me, gentlemen. One more bout, shall we? Into the wind. A quick sure. little dance. Me Let's and you. You up. and me. Now Do a little bit of this. A little bit of that. By a little bit of this. Divine. The good old... The bird's call. The wind swirl. Me. And Force suck. From and exorcism. I could have phrased that better. Anyway. Why have you stopped, Lenny? Is it the disappearing Is box? Is there device in that box? Huh. It just looks familiar somehow. Let me check this out for a second while you guys go on ahead. If anyone makes a major discovery, let's rendezvous here. All right. See you in a bit. It looks like the box he used in his performance. I'm going to disappear. I will reappear with my sister. The placement of this device inside. Hmm. If I remember correctly... Hmm. Where, where are we going? Firework. <gasps> Pretty. <laughs> Why do I have that on my Z? Oh, a puzzle? Oh, this is, looks fun. Without stepping on one twice. Okay. Oh, this is so sick. First try, boys. Here we go. Dude, I hope there's more puzzles like this in Fontaine. These puzzles are so fun. Do we get paid? Round two? Or Okay, they just got in formation. Or just Bream wander and glide from one to one. Yo, that's messed. That's messed up. Don't bring Mr. Cheat Codes into this. Wow. There's a hidden room here. Caesar's diary. Take a peek inside it, shall we? Just pilfering through a dead man's diary. This feels. What about about the wish list? At one of my shows a few days ago, a child asked me how I pulled candy out of my hat. As a joke, I told the kid that the hat has a built-in wish-granting machine. Next thing I know, today a whole bunch of kids were pestering me to pull all sorts of things out of the hat. There's no way Caesar's guilty. So we all I know this. Them another white lie. The machine needs time to power up, but in the meantime, you can write your wishes down. Well, they took me up on that offer, enthusiastically. As I write this, I've only just got back from running around all over town, buying the things they wanted. Boy, are my legs sore. Why would he buy stuff if he could just steal it? I wound up saving very little this month, but that's not a major issue. I now have a bigger problem. How am I going to hide all these things inside my hat? That's a fair problem. That's a fair problem. He values the hat over his rent. Two children came to talk to me after today's show. I don't know why they were out on their own. They looked much too young to be on... Linny and Lynette! I do hope they got home safely. Get a bigger hat? <laughs> That's probably Linny and Lynette. Anyway... They said that they wanted me to teach them how to do magic. It's his master. It's not uncommon for children to ask this, of course, but I've never seen any of them as serious about it as these two. I told them that learning magic is very hard. Oh. That didn't phase them at all. It's like they already knew. They seemed so committed. I couldn't turn them Caesar down. Caesar was their master. I love his VA too. It seems like something's bothering Lorenzo lately. But he won't open up to me about it. Surely he's not upset that I agreed to teach those two children. I'll have to talk him around. He's upset that you're getting married. I have a good Probably. feeling about those kids. They're naturally talented. It's like their father. It seems like they're not new to it's the like world of It's like their father, magic. chat. They have all sorts of fantastic ideas. All I'm really doing is helping them develop a more professional standard training plan. They wanted to call this is me neat. master. I like but this I a lot. I told them they absolutely mustn't. 
any magician worth their salt could have taught them what I have. They're the geniuses here. Compared to them, I don't deserve to be called any sort of master. With time, I have no doubt that they could become far greater magicians than I. My only concern is why they're so mature for their age. I fear they've had to grow up too fast. I don't dare to imagine what they must have been through. Oh, it's 100% Lenny. Gemma Lin. thinks so too. She doesn't like being around them. Says that their eyes are too piercing. They don't bother me, but then again, I've never been the sharpest tool in the shed. Hey, a hammer is very useful, and it's not very sharp. Okay, anyway. It's nearly time for me to go on tour. I asked the two kids if they'd like to come with me, but they shook their heads. I once overheard them talking about their father and their mission. Sounds like their parents have other plans for them. Arlecchino, the I father. I we'll be parting ways soon. It's only been ten days since I first met them, but I think that I've gotten a feel for their personalities now. They're very tough, but also very cautious, and they trust no one but each other. This, I fear, is not a good habit to have. Okay. They hide things from the me plot too. Thickens. For example, when I asked them where they live and why they wanted to learn magic, they lied. That's the thing about children. Whenever they're trying to cover something up, it always shows somehow. There's always a tell. I can sense that their lives have been hard. Possibly even dangerous, too. They're not like other children. Oh, Caesar's such a good guy. It's a shame that I can't do more to help them. After thinking things over, I decided to tell them a bit about how I see the world. It's full of lies and falsehoods. And that is why we must find our own truth. P.S. I hope they won't find my nagging annoying. Children are so opinionated nowadays. Will it do them more harm than good for someone they've only known 10 days to lecture them like that? P.P.S. Maybe I'm overthinking this. Children aren't BPS. interested in their grand philosophies. It probably just went in one ear and out the other. He changed their life, probably. Every word I said. He probably changed their life. Oh, Caesar, Caesar. Just mind your own business next time. This man wrote his own name twice in his diary. <laughs> Two magic geniuses with a father and a mission, huh? Yeah. Sounds a lot like he was writing about Linny and Lynette, don't you think? <gasps> so did they meet Caesar when they were kids? Let's go ask Linny. Linny, give us details about your traumatic childhood now to feed our ravenous curiosity. Skirt, skirt. I'm coming downstairs, Linny. You better be ready to open up and have an emotional moment with me. Linny? Shh, hold that thought. As I expected, there's a lot of fishy things going on in this place. Fishy? Uh-oh, what have you found? Is this disappearance thing tampered with? All in good time. Before we go over our new leads, I want to tell you how a high-altitude escape is performed. Yeah, he probably knows something that was tampered with. First, the magician slots themselves into a magic box in full view of the audience. The box is then suspended high in the air, and a short while later, the base automatically opens. At this point, a dummy will fall out of the box, but it looks real enough to grab the audience's attention, and they start wailing and screaming. Meanwhile, the real magician, who has by now blended into the crowd, waits for a good moment to make their appearance and put on a hysterical performance. Oh no! Is that me? Did I just fall to my death? Very vivid description. Paimon can really picture it. And then what? The audience's gaze then turns to the magician. She actually fell. And by the time they realize oh, what's happened, this is so sad. the dummy has vanished. As if everything that just happened was some sort of shared illusion. Of course, that's just how I think the process should work, theoretically speaking. Theoretically speaking, what do you mean? The inventor of this trick never performed it successfully. When the box opened, Caesar was the one who fell out, and not the dummy. He fell right to the ground from the highest point of the opera house. <sighs> no one could hope to survive that fall. Not without a vision, at least. And no one else has ever attempted this trick since. 
My understanding of how it works is just based on what I could gather from his notes and the relevant gadgets here in Linny his and workshop. Lynette watched their basic, basically father probably die. Or the only father, father-ish, not father Arlequino father, but the only kind of, like, person who had a fatherly influence in their lives drop and die on their performance, probably. So Caesar's famous high-altitude escape has never been done, huh? Someone was about to say how cool it would have been to see it in person, but if it's that dangerous, it's probably for the best that no one else tries to do it. They can't catch Wait a break, a man. So if a dummy is supposed to drop out of the box, then where does the real magician go? How does he get out? Glad you asked. That brings us to the secret of said box. This box right here is the one that Caesar constructed himself to use in the performance, and it's not as simple as it looks. Inside, there's a device that only the magician himself would know about. Once the magician's inside and the box is lifted up into the air, the audience's view of the box is fixed at a certain angle. Is it a rabbit? <laughs> From where they're standing, they have a clear view of the front, sides, and bottom, but the back and the top are now no longer visible. At this point, the magician presses a button inside the box, opening a secret door out of view. He then escapes through this trap door onto the opera house roof, waits for the dummy to fall and distract the audience, and quietly returns to mm. ground level. That's way simpler than Paimon imagined. Even Paimon could probably do it. <laughs> Paimon, you fly. <laughs> well, there's a little more to it than that, of course. The hardest part of this trick is controlling the audience's mood and reactions. That takes an exceptional degree of showmanship. There's the falling dummy, the miraculous reappearance, the pompous performing. Maybe the magician would even have themselves tied up before it begins mm. to strengthen the impression that there's no escape. Many days and nights of careful research and painstaking practice would have gone into this, all culminating in a performance just a few minutes long, but one that still manages to transform the shock and grief of a tragic accident to the joy and laughter of a mesmerizing magic trick. Caesar was a highly accomplished magician. But unfortunately, even he didn't manage to pull it off. So, how did it go so wrong? You it was you tampered with. Stuff here. Have you figured out what really happened? I can make a pretty good guess. I looked into the case files. The magic box Caesar was using at the time of his death had the secret button I mentioned positioned on the right-hand side. And, sure enough, he always used his right hand as his dominant hand in public. Okay. Nothing suspicious there. But here's the strange thing. Most of the devices in this workshop have the mechanism on the left-hand side, including this box right here. Which leads me to believe that Caesar was, in fact, left-handed. Caesar pretended to be right-handed probably because it would make better magic tricks and more deception. Because a magician can't afford to have their most basic habits stand out too much. Smart. People naturally focus Big their brain. attention Big on the most brain. important details of the task or situation at hand. But a magician needs to be able to redirect an audience's attention at will so as to avoid arousing their suspicion. The essence of magic is getting people to believe a lie. If even the truth raises eyebrows, the falsehoods become all the more difficult to mask. Mm. And so, Caesar trained himself to use his Dude, right magicians hand are so to cool. align with his audience's expectations. Great magic always requires sacrifices. But in his most stressful and nerve-wracking moments, and when no one was watching, reflex would kick in and he'd use his left hand. That's why he set his gadgets with the mechanism on his left. Maybe someone exploited that fact against him? Exactly. I think that's likely what happened. Lorenzo! Caesar would have been under a lot of time pressure during the escape. He'd have had mere seconds to open the hidden compartment, retrieve the dummy, then open the secret door and make a swift escape. But I'm sure he was confident. He would have rehearsed countless times to the point where it was second nature. He'd barely need to think about what he was doing because muscle memory would guide him through. So if you practice it so many times, the second you go to reach for something that's not there, you would enter panic mode. And you wouldn't start like, you You would be so confident it would be there, you wouldn't just have the time to think that it might be on the other so side. So he opened the compartment, took out the dummy, checked everything was in order, and then went to leave. With his left hand, he reached for the button, and suddenly his heart skipped a beat. 
It wasn't there. Ooh, I like the little animations. Me with my car keys? Lol. Much like when you reach for your keys but find your pocket empty, <laughs> his mind needed a moment to process what was going on. Instinctively, his left hand would keep feeling around for the missing button, maybe for another second or two, until the bottom of the box gave way. He couldn't stick his head, his, his, his legs against the sides of the box to prevent from falling the out. Stakes being as high as they were, just a two second delay Dang. cost him everything. The authorities would find nothing suspicious and conclude that his death was due to his own error. It makes sense though. You wouldn't think that you, you would think you'd be able to find the button. He didn't have time to react like in that. In reality, someone switched the boxes and they did it to murder him. But how would they be able to make the switch without being noticed? That would be difficult to pull off, no? It would have to have been someone who knew that he was left-handed and who could move his props around without arousing suspicion. Someone who was always by his side. Lorenzo? No way! Isn't that right, Lorenzo? And he's here. You just couldn't let sleeping dogs lie, could you? There was nothing that indicated it was Lorenzo. <laughs> There's not a lot of people who'd go to all this trouble for some magician who died ten years ago. I didn't want to have to do this, you know. Silencing you the hard way just creates more problems for me to deal with. Do you really think you're going to win? Do you but not I know who the traveler is? I hoped you'd do what's good for you and back off like the lady, but you disappoint me. You mean Gemma? So you are the one who's been threatening her. Yes, although however stubborn she up might be, she was never much of a liability. But you people... You never even knew him, but for some reason you just wouldn't drop it. But they did. Which is why you can't leave this place alive. Take them out and make it quick. Yo, so for how smart Lorenzo is, you think he'd do his research that your boy Lenny is walking around with a literal, like, god slayer. <laughs> do your worst. You know what I mean? You feel like by now people would, like, people who have brains would realize... Traveler's like one of the most famous people in Tamehat. Obey. Whoa! What is this? Yo, is that a? Uh, am I fighting an excavator right now? What the? Is this Bob the Builder? Die, Tamehat! Go, go, Chad! You. Oh, this ain't a construction site. Sit down. He's going to slice their... Oh. <laughs> or a little bit of teleportation? Oh. <laughs> oh, you kids are tougher than you look. I would have gone away with it, too, if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Not enough yet, Lorenzo? Your cronies can't help you now. I think it's high time you started talking. And what I'd really like to know is... Why did you murder Caesar? He was... He was in love. And Caesar got murdered by his friend. It's... It's Brutus. A two I brute. I Amora for every time you've said that man's name. Of course you idolized Caesar. Everyone else did. But I was the real genius magician. Me. He was just an amateur who did cheap tricks for gullible children. I was the one who made magic into the fine art it is today. The aristocrats doffed their hats to me. So it was jealousy. <laughs> it was love. Jealousy. Hatred. No, it was like. it was jealousy. I hated Caesar. All he cared about was his magic. He lived and breathed it. Caesar died. Is that JoJo reference? Oh no, Caesar! He poured everything into his street performances and his stupid tours, like it was just a hobby to him, never bothering to think about Mora. What sort of fool devotes their life to the art of deception and never has a mora to show for it? Yo, Lenny's getting pissed right now. This guy's slandering something that is honorable about this magician and his mentor at the but same the time. People loved him, didn't they? Oh, how they looked up to him. No one gave me a second look. All I ever heard was, Oh, your master's amazing, isn't he? Amazing. Yeah, so amazing that he was completely broke. 
Every other apprentice was living it up at their master's expense, but no, not me. I put in all the work, mastered all the skills, and it brought me nothing more than the life I already had. So you killed him. Why didn't you just leave? He forbade me from using magic to trick people out of their mora. There was nothing he hated more than that. And with his reputation in Fontaine, it was too risky for me to go it alone. As long as he was alive, if I dabbled in my own brand of oh, money discover him? magic, he would expose me and it would destroy me. I had to kill him. There was no other way. He had to go. Dude, this voice actor is so good. Oh my lordy. <laughs> And this was your only motive? It was reason enough. What other motive would I need? Love. Well, I was under the impression that there might have been other factors at play. For instance, maybe you were in love with Gemma, but she was engaged to Caesar. In love with Gemma? D don't be ridiculous. Guess I was wrong about that then. <laughs> Next question. Are you the Phantom Weasel? I am. Oh! Caesar was so strict with me. He insisted that his way was the right way. That the sole purpose of magic was to bring joy to the world. I never bought into any of that. I was more interested in the practical value of magic. Sure enough, it helped me fill my pockets with all kinds of valuable treasures. But I heard that the phantom weasel stole from the rich and poor alike. Oh, yeah! Charlotte told us that the weasel would steal whatever people valued, no matter how much he was worth. That's just how it looked from the outside. What would any thief want with second-rate loot? I've only ever targeted high-value items. I stole cheap things as a way of practicing my craft. Mm. It was other people's overactive imaginations that conjured up the preposterous image they then dubbed the Phantom Weasel. So, that's the story, huh? Well, I hope you're ready to tell it all over again during your trial. What choice do I have? You're a pack of wolves and you've got me between your jaws. You've seen what's here and my last ditch effort to stop it getting out has failed. What else can I do? So be it. I've enjoyed power and wealth for the last 10 years. The likes of which Caesar could never give me. I wouldn't choose for things to end this way. But I regret nothing. Dude, this guy... Ugh, I don't like this. He's satisfied. Very well. In that case, I'll contact the guards. Traveler, Paimon. Keep an eye on Lorenzo for me. I'll meet you just outside the workshop when I'm back. Yes, sir. No way he gets out, right? Oh. But first we get... Oh, some gambling money. Let's go. At least I can finally stop looking over my shoulder now. Yo, you're messed up, bro. You're going away. You're going away. Wait, was I supposed to stay in there? Uh-oh. Did I fail the mission? It turns out you weren't supposed to leave. You're supposed to stay in there and watch him for like 10 minutes. No, he's going to escape. Oh. Oh. Lily has oh, no. told me the whole story. Man, if I had a penny for every time we walk an evil person out... Or, like, hand over an evil person to the cops after a character quest. I'd have, like, four pennies. It's not a lot, but... Lorenzo, <laughs> do you confess to the murder Strange of coincidence. Caesar and to framing him for the Phantom Weasel's crimes? Mm. <laughs> Look who's finally developed a conscience. Dang, What Lord. kind of disciple murders their own master? I hope it was worth it. Because they'll be hell to pay. Yeah, you tell him, Lori. <sighs> Looks like it's all over. What should we do next, Lenny? Should we start preparing for your show? Is he going to tell us the truth? Huh. Let me think. Let's rendezvous with Lynette and Gemma first. With Lorenzo in custody, Gemma will no longer have to fear for her safety. True? Point. Is there going to be we another twist, though? Good news right away. It'll give her some peace of mind for sure. And Lenny and Lynette hopefully can, like... Talk to Gemma about how good of an influence Lorenzo was. And like how impactful he was in their lives. That would be cool. That'd be a nice, very nice touch for Gemma. Like, oh, these these kids basically had like the only good influence in the entirety of their childhood. 
and it was Lorenzo. Not Lorenzo. Not Lorenzo. Not Lorenzo. Caesar. Ah, uh, you're back. What if she becomes? This is gonna happen. But what if she becomes like a mother to them? Oh, that'd be so sick. Like a godmother or something. Please, please, Hoyoverse. You were so quick. I've only just finished my third dessert. Girl, it is the morning. We left at the night time. It is morning time now. How slow do you eat? Your third? Lynette, come on. We've talked about this. Everything in moderation. You're not going to have any room left for dinner now. This time we're different. It is noon. Look up. Look at the sun. That's fine. I'll shift to exercise mode and jog off the excess sugar. It's Lynette, are you are you an android? Are you a robot? Because because normal humans do not say you're shifting into different modes. That's besides the point. <sighs> well, it's done now. Are you but Catherine? Try to eat a more balanced diet in the future. <sighs> like your point mom. Taken. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Chad. <laughs> Lynette's face. Did everything go okay? Of course. Lorenzo was no match for us. The guards are taking him into custody as we speak. Gosh, that's amazing. I'm sorry. I still didn't know if I could trust you, but now it seems I can. I had my suspicions about Lorenzo, but I... <laughs> it's okay. We understand. He did threaten you. Paimon would find it hard to trust strangers in your position, too. But you don't need to be scared anymore. Everything's gonna be okay. Sorry. Sorry. My emotions are all over the place right now. I've been waiting for this day to come for so long. Dang. I always wanted to report Lorenzo. He she took was all scared. of Caesar's property, which I found suspicious. But I had people watching me all the time, so I couldn't risk looking into it. I was so afraid. I was scared he'd do something terrible to me, and then no one would be left to visit Caesar's grave. So I never had the courage to speak out. She didn't have the courage because she was afraid the last... Because everyone... Oh, man! Everyone for like forsook or had forsaken Caesar, and so no one would ever fi visit his grave. So out of her not wanting to leave him without anyone left in the world... That's why she didn't have the courage to speak out. Dane. Okay. All right, girl. Thank you all. Truly. Thank you so much. No problem, Jimma. At Lenny's suggestion, everyone goes to the cemetery to announce Lorenzo's arrest and hold a, cer a memorial for Caesar. Yo, giving people Thank the funerals they deserve. Caesar's name. This has happened twice now. I never would have guessed that Lorenzo was the real phantom weasel. He never showed any signs that there were problems between him and Caesar in public. From the outside, it looked like they got along great. Okay, icing on the cake. Lenny and Lynette talked to her about the influence Caesar had on your life. Uh, and to think that lowlife's been living life to the fullest all this time while Caesar's name was getting dragged through the mud. It's a travesty. Dang. Baltazar is kind of cool. At least his soul can finally rest in peace now. Thanks to your efforts. No problem, man. <laughs> If, if only I'd realized before it was too late. Don't blame yourself, Gemma. This isn't your fault. Yeah, you still have the rest of your life to live. Caesar wouldn't want to see you spending it feeling guilty. All right, here it is. Hmm. Here it is. Am I going to cry? <clears throat> I need to prepare myself emotionally just in case. Chad, don't look at me. Don't, don't look at me. Cheer up, Gemma. My brother's doing a magic show at the Opera House tomorrow evening. Would you like to come along? It might raise your spirit. Or be insanely traumatic? Hello? <laughs> this show will be a special one. We're holding it in Caesar's honor. Okay, a little, a little less traumatic. In Caesar's honor? Really? You know how much that would mean to her, chat, after him being forsaken by society? For them to host, like, a big show to honor someone and, like change the history of his name oh, thank you i'll be there that'd be like all the worth in the Great. world to you we'll see you tomorrow evening traveler paimon don't be late oh don't worry we'll be there no way are we gonna miss out on a free magic show oh this is cute wait paimon feels like we're forgetting something oh yes caesar's diary we never found out if the two kids Caesar taught magic to were Linny and Lynette or not. Uh, Linny changed the to 
topic back in the workshop, so we didn't get a chance to bring it up. Oh, well. Guess we'll just have to ask Linny tomorrow evening. All right, and that we will. That we will. Tomorrow evening, 1800 tomorrow. Time will now speed up. Um, man, Jimma's design is so cool. The black outfit that fits the Fontaine theme, but it's like also like an outfit of mourning. If they don't end up, they're going to. They're going to chat. They're going to end up telling her. They're going to end up telling her. They gotta. They gotta. If they don't, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry and pee my pants. Live on main. Just out of spite. All right. Time for another magic show. Hopefully no one gets murdered this time. <laughs> or I guess he murdered himself technically. So hopefully no one dies, I guess, this time. Two magic shows in one act, man. We're... We're eating good. And two times we have cleared, like, the deceased of, like, their, like, of false accusations at their grave. All right, here we go. Yoo-hoo. Big summer blowout. It's me, Chan Yoon. Do I get to sit next to Nouvellet again? Hopefully. Please. Please. Please, God, please. Let it be so. <clears throat> oh, we get to sit next to Charlotte. Or... Oh, wait, Charlotte's here. Char Hi, Charlotte. <laughs> wait, oh, this is... <laughs> I love Charlotte. Here I am, as we agreed. I wonder what kind of show Linny has prepared for us this time. Oh, the anticipation. It's killing me. Why the F are you oh, sitting here? Come sit with us now. Thank you both for capturing Lorenzo. Now that this decade-long case of the Phantom Weasel has finally been put to rest... I'm going to go through my notes and put it all together into the most spectacular special column piece to ever grace the pages of the Steambird. You go, girl. We support our little artist. Yo, come sit next to us. We have an open seat, Charlotte. Oh. Unless Paimon counts, I guess. <laughs> Paimon's excited to Where all these people come, come from? Not this time. My brother's going solo today. Oh. So I'll be watching with you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everybody's ready. Are we getting another cutscene? The show is about to begin. The great magician Linny has prepared a spectacular show for us all tonight, concluding with an all-new grand finale that no audience has ever seen before. It's gonna be the Caesar's trick, yo. That's going to be traumatizing for for Gemma. Seeing the same trick that her husband, beloved, died in. Wow! A new trick! Thank you all so much for coming. Now, prepare to join me on a journey or it will be honoring. and miraculous. You never know how these... It, it could be very honoring, too. Wait, what? Where's our cutscene? <sighs> Exciting stuff, isn't it? Yes, it's just... It, it reminds me of him. That's what I'm saying, man. No wonder. Caesar was a famous magician, too. So, how did you two first meet, Gemma? Hmm? Well, I was out on the street once, and I saw him performing for little children. Children love magic, because they're willing to believe in things that can't be rationally explained. Like Santa. Caesar had this amazing way of bringing them into a dreamlike world. Or like Delaware. And somehow, I felt drawn to him too. So I went up and asked him to do a trick for me. Aww, he that sounds so romantic. He pulled out a rose. What trick did he do? It was with a flower. He took it in his hand, snapped his fingers, and it magically appeared on my head. Which flower was, I was it? I was so happy that day. No one had ever given me a flower before that. Oh, that's so cute. Uh, actually, now that you mention it, Linny's done that one before. Is that right? Then I suppose he's a romantic at heart, just like Caesar. So let's treasure the time we have with him. Based, Jemma? After all... You never know when the people dearest to you might be gone. Don't be sad. The killer's been caught. Yeah. 
don't be sad. Don't be sad about your 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 dead lover. Don't don't be sad. I mean, he's being nice. He's being nice. That's right. He's trying to be nice. It's all over now. In his colon open parenthesis way. Um, Paimon doesn't really know how to comfort you, but at the very least, no one's gonna be intimidating you from now on. That's fair. You can breathe easy at last, right? Do your best, Paimon. Right. Yes, you can breathe easy now, Phantom Weasel. See? Even Lynette says... Wait, what? The Phantom Weasel? Lorenzo escaped? Where is he? Uh, what do you mean, Phantom Weasel? As Lenny once said, a performer's job is to commit fully to their role and put on a flawless performance for their audience. No way. No way they... Because I thought she was at the beginning. But then in the middle, I was like, oh, no, and they're going with the easy route. No way, they hit me with the one, too. But once the bag of tricks is empty and the curtain falls, it's time to end the show. The spotlight is no place for someone with no more cards up their sleeve. It's been 10 years, Gemma. Aren't you tired of the grieving widow act? I think it's time to put an end to it. Yo, Traveler, do not say anything. There's nothing we can say that... that... <gasps> what are you talking about? Uh, Paimon doesn't like this riddle. Traveler, Paimon doesn't like where this is going. Come on, say something. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all enjoying the performance so far. Oh my gosh, that's what I thought originally, and then I got bamboozled. I folded on my theory. There will now be a brief intermission, after which Linny will perform the most electrifying act of tonight's show. The one we've all been waiting for. Robert Houdin? Houdin? As in, like, Houdini? The final performance will take place outside of the opera house. <laughs> the so crowd. please make Look your way crowd. outside in a calm and orderly fashion. Why is everyone cheering except these guys? Yo, they're just all standing there. You're like, yo, a little stuck up. Come on, Charlotte. Phantom Weasel never did like public places, did they? <laughs> Don't worry. This place will be quiet soon. Let's talk somewhere else for now. Hello? Go, go somewhere quiet and ask about the truth? Oh, shoot! I still don't know where this is going to land. I actually don't, chat. Is she going to be Phantom Weasel for good reasons or bad all the way through? I'm guessing bad. The way Lynette talked. Dear me, this is awkward, isn't it? And unfortunately, I'm all out of gadgets. <laughs> so I'm afraid I can't do any tricks to liven up the mood. Yeah, I love Liddy. This is a big mistake for a magician to make. But thankfully, I do have a backup plan. Now, who wants to hear a story? Oh, I do. I do. Uh, Lenny, don't we have more important things to address right now? Lynette accused Gemma of being the real Phantom Weasel a moment ago. Oh, what the heck's going on? All in good time. Magicians are good at guessing what people are thinking. I know the questions you want to ask. And as it happens, the story I'm about to tell might answer always, a few of them. Always with the theatrics, this one. Okay, what am I thinking of now? Mirror Maiden. <clears throat> no, I'm joking. Really? Well then, let's hear it! Paimon's dying of curiosity here! Let's go back to the very beginning. A decade ago, when the Phantom Weasel was terrorizing the Court of Fontaine. She never missed a target, never left a trace, and no treasure was safe from her thieving hands. But as her infamy grew, Ooh. so did the readiness of the police, and her opportunities to act became ever fewer. Every day, she ran the risk of being exposed for who she was. Dude, look at this frame! This is clean! She looks sick! Of course, she could not simply take this lying down, and before long, she found her ticket to freedom. She would create a scapegoat, a false weasel, to close the chapter on her behalf. After weighing her options, she set her sights on a renowned magician, Caesar. After all, magic and theft shared enough similarities for people to buy the story when the truth came out. So, 
So then what? Being the master deceiver she was, the weasel Yo, this is a good Caesar's trust. Now all that remained was to frame him for her countless crimes. Oh, yo, kill her, Lenny. <clears throat> this is a good twist. Holy. But also, the illustrations are so nice. But or, as she was I guess considering it's in... how to make her move, she noticed Caesar's aggrieved pupil, and a new thought entered her mind. Maybe I don't need to get my hands dirty after all. At her encouragement, Lorenzo tampered with Caesar's magic box, causing him to fall to his death. Afterwards... Lorenzo seized his master's property, and the weasel set about tarnishing Caesar's reputation. Two co-conspirators committed the perfect crime. <sighs> I've got to hand it to you. You're both exceptional storytellers. It's enough to make even me wonder whether there was really another mastermind behind all this. Pulling the strings. But I just have one question. You seem to think that I am the villain in this tale. What's brought this on, Linny? Is it something that Lorenzo said? Don't worry. Lorenzo said nothing at all. But I never believed that he was the weasel. And in fact, my investigation only made me more certain of He that. was very forthcoming. He was too forthcoming with his confession. As if there was something else he was trying to hide. His love. How disappointing. So you'd sooner trust Lorenzo than me? Even without a shred of evidence? A magician is an expert at playing the audience to get the result they want. And I have no doubt that you, Gemma, are equally talented in this regard. With a little help from Lorenzo, you put on a very convincing performance. The lovesick fiancé, whose devotion to her betrothed is unshakable, even under threats of violence. Caesar was maligned and hated by all for ten years, but you... Everyone sympathized with your plight. Who would suspect for one second that the lovely young lady always seen weeping in front of Caesar's grave was actually the mastermind behind his demise? No, not that poor lady. Dang. I perish the thought. Wait, so you mean the whole intimidation thing was just a hoax? Gemma and Lorenzo were both in on it? But why would Lorenzo agree to that? And why didn't he sell her out even at the end instead? Yes, why indeed. Because he was in love? Hmm. Maybe Gemma herself could enlighten us on that question. Well, Linny, if you're so confident in your version of events, then I think the answer should be obvious. Having killed Caesar with his own hands, Lorenzo was plagued by overwhelming guilt. Revealing the Phantom Weasel's true identity would serve no purpose. But if the Weasel remained free, then she could take care of Lorenzo's loved ones. An excellent answer. Though sadly, a little dull. <laughs> Is that right? Well, don't let me bore you. If you'd care to change the topic to something more interesting, I'd be much obliged. Dang, getting devious. As a matter of fact, there's one thing I'd really like to understand. Why would the real weasel have targeted things that only have value to other people? Could you shed any light on that? Of course. After all, we're just telling stories here, aren't we? If I had to guess, I would say that the real weasel must have had a terrible childhood. Left to fend for herself after her parents died young. Betrayed. Scorned. Beaten. She'd scrounge waste paper from garbage bins to draw on, using twigs and dirt for lack of ink and pen. She'd sew ugly rag dolls from whatever scrap material she could get her hands on. This was her only source Dang. of happiness. She got hoyoed. She got hoyo burst. And she was content. Until the world decided that even this was too good for her. Once again, she was betrayed. And this time, everything was taken from her. She felt like life was a miry pit that dragged her further down the more she struggled to escape. At that tender age, she should have been happy. Instead, she stood in the shadows and watched with envy as all good things in the world passed her by. So then she became the evil she experienced. She became just, she let her situations 
turn her into someone as worse as everything that's been done to her. Pathetic. This was a fate too cruel for anyone to bear. Her pain became a breeding ground for dark thoughts. Thoughts which festered and grew into a twisted solution to her troubles. I detest the happiness of others, in all its forms alike. Wanderer, is this your puppet? True! <laughs> Wanderer 2.0! <laughs> this is very much a Wanderer line, or a Skara line. I will rob them of everything they hold to be good and true. And it will fill the void in my soul. That's some pretty heavy stuff. <laughs> now it all makes sense. Does this story satisfy you, Linny? Yes, it is quite to my tastes. Thank you for helping to clear up my confusion. So what was with the warning letter? Huh. That's right. What drove you to write that letter, Gemma? What were you trying to achieve there? Because without that, none of this would have ever come to light. She didn't write the letter. You did. <sighs> After ten long years... No? I'd hoped that the Phantom Weasel would be consigned to the history books by now. <sighs> but it seems like someone still wasn't ready to let her finally yes. be at peace. Linny. Or should I call you the Phantom Copycat now? You were the one who posted that letter outside the Opera House. Very sharp, Phantom Weasel. Still as shrewd as ever. Well, no need Dude, I love Lynette and Lenny so much. Our goal was to clear Caesar's name. Oh, and now that we have all this, I loved how Lynette just ripped into her from the get-go. Beyblade let an emotional rip. The most straightforward way to change the public's impression of Caesar was to force the weasel to show themselves. Uh, that's it? You had no other agenda? No, he... Caesar was their dad, basically. Of course we did. We made it quite clear in the letter, I believe. I shall take from you that which you hold most dear, just as you did to me ten years ago. Uh, ten years ago? She doesn't you remember. You Caesar's death? You met him? Oh, wait. Oh, I get it. You were those two obnoxious kids. It's been so long, and you're all grown up now. Dude, she is messed up, chat. Zero you. sympathy. Yo, stab her! He taught Sorry. you magic Sorry. back then, <clears throat> didn't he? For, what, ten days or something? <laughs> and you went to all this trouble. Why? Because you feel like you still owe him something? We remember all our debts, however great or small. Isn't that similar, similar to, isn't that Fatui line too, Chad? Ten years ago, Caesar's reputation was torn to shreds and his legacy was thrown out. Ten years on and no one cares what the truth is anymore. But we did not forget. Oh! And so we came to find you. Oh, that's a sick line. And... What exactly did you take from me? I'm still standing, as you can see. Lorenzo has admitted to everything. I'm free. It would actually be a crazy touch if they actually, like... Free? <laughs> killed her. Do you really think so? Caesar I don't think they would. Caesar once told me that even though the world is filled with lies and falsehoods, we must find our own truth. I think that applies to you, too. Truth can take many forms. Prized possessions with nostalgic value, fervent hopes and dreams, and irreplaceable people. Are they going to give a bunch of stuff to Life people? Life took many things from you, and those wounds never healed. When they ached unbearably in the dead of night, stealing became your way of numbing the pain. What are you trying to say? I'm saying that for the last 10 years, you've been living a rather uneventful life. Perhaps that's because you found something other than a life of crime to fill the hole? Back to Lorenzo for a second. He murdered his own master, played along with your act, and took the pains love. to make sure any suspicion would be directed towards him. But what did he have to gain from all that? He knew who you were and the things you'd done, and despite that, he was willing to give everything up for your sake. He's the reason that you haven't felt the compulsion to steal in all these years. You're more than just accomplices in murder. You're the only real friends each other has. So I think you know, is Lenny gonna down, take out Lorenzo? The truth you have in your life. 
But that truth is gone now. And I guarantee you, you'll never see it again. Oh, I love this. I love, oh man, Lenny and Lynette, how they're delivering this gotcha moment is so good. Congratulations on your freedom, Gemma. I love Lynette so. <laughs> your freedom will cost you dearly. From now on, you'll be all alone in a world full of lies and falsehoods. I do hope you'll be able to bear it. You've still got a long life ahead of you, after all. Man, this feels so satisfying. It, it, more so than the ocean in one, too, chat. Gather round, one and all. The time has now come for the amazing Linny to perform his final act in tonight's show. I'm sure you're all wondering what he has planned for the grand finale. Well, wonder no more, for the answer is a death-defying high-altitude escape. A high-altitude escape? Ten years ago, the trick that Caesar died attempting. I'm sure you all remember the magician Caesar. This was the very trick that led to his fatal fall, after which he was dubbed the Phantom Weasel. But we have now learned that Caesar was wrongly accused, and that the real Weasel... Yeah, pop off, announcer. To their <laughs> very good timing, announcer. Guess that's my cue to leave. Whew. I've been practicing this one for ages now, but I'm still a little nervous. Traveler, Paimon, I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. There may be a lot of people watching tonight, but you alone are my true witnesses. Oh. <laughs> Lenny, wait. You two hid a lot from Caesar. He went to his grave without ever knowing your secrets. So what about now? Are you in Dude, look book? at his face. Or look at Lenny's face. Ever? You don't have to tell lies to end up isolated and alone. One day, you'll end up exactly where I am today. Maybe then you'll finally understand. Can we just like steal her shoes or something? Or like throw dirt in her face. We don't. She can live, but just like. You're wrong. I'm nothing like you. Huh. So, uh, what are we uh, doing now? <laughs> I was like, do we still stay for this? Like Lenny said, when you're ready, let's head outside and watch the show. But what about Gemma? She'll figure out what's best for her soon enough. Oh, she's gonna. And if you'd like to see Lenny to after the show. You know where he'll be. The usual haunt. What's the usual haunt? All right. Well, let's go and watch Lenny's finale then. <laughs> I love Paimon's this voice. This trick's a pretty dangerous one, but she should be able to pull it off, right? She's like, I just witnessed an atrocity unfold. And <laughs> okay, let's go finish the magic show. Um, Jimma. Gemma and Lorenzo are basically Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie was married to a man in prison for robbery. Oh, uh, the night. The interesting thing about this is you have a staunch difference because Lenny and Lynette went through what Gemma went through, except worse. And they like rose above the pain that was caused to them. And Gemma became something worse than it. Right. Oh, my gosh. Magicians are not like thieves. Thieves only tear things apart. But good-hearted magicians, they put things back together. Because the true vengeance chat, when something is like wronged to you, is to overcome it and to become better than it. And the truly awful thing, like when you think about it, like people cause this pain to you, so you cause it to others. You're, you're essentially honoring that pain that was done to you instead of like defying it, right? Or instead of, like, wringing your hand at the word, world. What is my truth? <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm like a gambling addict. <sighs> All I care about is winning. And it doesn't matter what's at stake. <sighs> By the time I come to my senses, I'm left with nothing. <sighs> oh, if I had my time again. Remember, chat, she murdered someone who's literally too good for this world. Oh, my gosh. Watch the high-altitude escape trick. Unleashed. Hey, Lenny, Manifest. please don't end this by dying. <laughs> just, just, just a small request. Small request. 
Just, just for me, please. Gotta keep pulling that gotcha girl. She just like me for real. I'm a gambling addict too. Oh, cutscene, full cutscene. Magic should be mysterious. Oh, look at the surprising, art. And defy logic. Magic is hard work. Every single movement has to be practiced. It was the only father they had, Chad. It's all right. We're used to that. Uh, oh, this looks so We're cute. sorry. You've taught us so much, but we can't tell you the whole truth. <sighs> it's okay. Do you still remember what I told you? They're so This tall. world is full of lies and falsehoods. Tell I only Caesar. hope that one day you can find your own truth. Look at the head's face. What about you? Have you found your the truth? The box. Magic is my truth. I want to perform a magic trick so great that people will always think of me when they talk about it. For a magician, what greater honor could there be? Dude, the art. Oh, and him doing his father's oh, wish. Lenny is sealed inside the box. Will he manage to escape? Is he gonna do it, Chad? Is he gonna do Ten it? Ten years ago, Caesar attempted this very trick, and it was at this oh, precise this moment. Oh, this cinematic is insane! Look at the enemy. Lenny, watch out! It's part of the trick. <laughs> Wait, did it actually snap? No shot. Mysterious. No, no, no. That's part of the trick. Surprising. The anime. This is a character story. We're getting a movie. And logic to find. Isn't that right? This honor belongs to you, Caesar. I'm just sorry it's a little late. Oh my gosh, that was so that? good. One minute he was falling, and the next he turned into flowers. Dude, the parallels too of him 10 days. And he was those characters' father. And the words he said to them, and the emotions, and the purity of that man changing their lives forever with just 10 days. And then the parallels of the art. Of them both falling. And then, oh my gosh. And the art and the music. Felicimo. Good soup. Well done, John Hoyoverse. Well done. Well. How could he possibly have done that? How mysterious. I didn't blink once. He just vanished right in front of my eyes. What a heart-stopping magic show. This was really worth the trip. Mm -hmm. Caesar's name has finally been cleared, and Fontaine's new star magician, Linny, has fulfilled a wish on his behalf. Yeah, tell the world, oh, Charlotte. I couldn't ask for a better grand finale. It will make a great headline for the Steambird tomorrow, even if I do say so myself. <sighs> Looks like everyone really loved Linny's grand finale. Even though they don't know the full story. Climate doesn't see Linny anywhere. Where'd he go? Oh, Lynette said he'd be waiting for us at the... Usual haunt, but um, where is that? The cemetery? Oh, you mean the one where Caesar's buried? Yeah, that's probably it. This whole magic show kind of seemed like Lenny's way of saying goodbye to Caesar. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that that's where he'd be afterward. All right, let's go look for him there. Here we go to the cemetery. Chat, how many times are we going to visit this? How many times are we going to visit the cemetery in the Fontaine story quests? So far, we visited one, two, three, what, four times, maybe? <laughs> it's just, uh, I guess, I guess, I guess. Here we go again. Back through the graveyard. The wee wee, mon ami. Skirt, skirt. And then we can visit Kazuha's, uh, Kazuha's best bud's grave as well. When in Rome. In for a penny, in for a pound. Time to go. That was so good, though. Oh, my gosh, chat. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Um. Oh, my goodness. And what a great character, Caesar. 
And then the way Linny and Lynette got the true weasel. Oh, good stuff. Linny, there you are. Um, are you all right? Paimon was scared to death when the chain broke. Paimon was sure something had gone horribly wrong. Magic is a performance art. A magician has to get creative to keep the audience on tenter. Don't you play the song, Hoyo! That's our job. So I tweak Caesar's original setup a little to keep it fresh. No, it's the emotion song. <laughs> I was honestly a little nervous during the live performance. The thought of falling, suddenly feeling weightless, seeing the sky and the ground spinning and spinning. And then he thought of us. Sometimes... I can't help but wonder what Caesar thought in those final moments. Mm. Did he regret taking Gemma and Lorenzo on? Or did he believe that it was his own slip up right until the end? You know, Paimon's been wanting to ask you about something ever since we were in Caesar's workshop. You learned magic from Caesar. Yeah, look once, how beautiful the flowers you? are. When was that? After I joined the House of the Hearth. To be honest, Lynette and I had an agenda when we approached him. Tell us a little bit of lore. I told you about my past before, remember? As a young boy, I survived by secretly learning magic okay, from yeah. street performers. I'd watch their tricks and try to figure out how they were done. But I quickly realized that observation alone could only get me so far. What I saw was the polished final performance, but the rigorous training they put in behind the scenes remained invisible to me. I needed to learn how to improve my sleight of hand, hone my misdirection skills, and make niftier props. We were gifted enough that we'd made some progress by ourselves, but without proper guidance from a professional magician, we quickly plateaued. So that's why you sought Caesar out? Yes. We figured there was no harm in asking, but it took us by surprise that he was so willing to teach us. In all, we only spent ten short days together, but he was very good to us. By contrast, we hid so many things from him. Uh, that's For fine. instance, when he asked why I wanted to learn magic, I answered, it's my passion. But in truth, there was already a lot more to the story by then. After being taken in by an aristocrat for our magic talent, then betrayed soon after, this was no longer about me doing what I loved. What amazed me was how the lie escaped my lips even as I was hesitating over whether to tell him the truth. Trust is a beautiful thing. Sadly, I'd forgotten how to trust by then. Lenny. I don't blame you. That wasn't your fault. Still worried about the way I feel? <laughs> you really are a gentle soul, aren't you? Oh, yeah, he is. But don't worry. I'm used to it now. From the mansions of the elite to the house of the hearth, lies and selfishness have followed me and Lynette everywhere we go. After Caesar went on tour, we became busy with our missions. The next we heard of him was that he'd fallen to his death and was now declared to be the Phantom Weasel. That night, I remembered his smile. But as I lay there, I didn't know what to say to him. To keep secrets is to put up walls. The longer you keep them up, the less you let people in. Then one day, you look around and realize your life is like an empty auditorium after Dang, a show. Dang, this analogy is crazy. Full of seats once occupied by all the people who left. But I guess that's the price we have to pay. Whoa. You only realize how much someone really meant to you when you lose them completely. That's why I was so confident this would hurt Gemma. Because I felt it for myself. Don't be sad, we're in your auditorium and we're not going anywhere. Yeah! Cheers. Hell yeah! We've had to say our fair share of goodbyes. Are you gonna give us some Fatui secrets too. now? But whatever happens, Paimon always believes in what tomorrow brings. Oh, that's a sick line, too. Delicious food, fun toys, and the traveler by my side. Paimon just needs to focus on things like this, and all the unhappy stuff goes right out the window. I'm on giving therapy once again. Tale as old as time. Um, you know, Traveler, doesn't that kind of make you Paimon's truth? Exactly. It's the same for me and Lynette. 
We are the truest thing each other has in the world, and nothing can replace that. Life has taken plenty from us, like it did from Gemma. But at least it left us with each other. That's what gave us the strength to get through the darkest days. That's why the darkness never consumed me, and why it never will. Maybe we live in the shadows too, but we remember every Aww. precious ray of light that shines through. Alright, time to lighten this conversation up a little. What did you think of the show tonight? Were you happy with it? It was amazing! This I is so nice. Hadn't been so distracted with the Gemma situation. Good stinking writing too, to holy. The opera house just talking and pretty much missed the entire first half of the show. Um, Winnie, could you do just one more trick for us? Whoa, that's a bit of a tall order, I'm afraid. Is it the flower? The show's just finished, so my it's gonna be a different flower. Card free right now. Aw, come on! Surely you can think of something. The Lenny Pond it's gonna be a flower can trick. do anything of It's gonna be a different flower, to too. Oh, all right. A flower of, like, reunion I'll or something, go, or friendship. But only because it's you. Watch closely. I have a flower in my hand. You liar! There's nothing in your hand! What? Huh? My goodness, you're right. But I could have sworn I brought one here with me. Hmm. Okay, try this. Count down with me. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Now, have another look around. Maybe the flowers appeared somewhere else. Really? Let's see. <laughs> she looks at Traveler immediately. Wait, is that the romance flower or friendship? But more importantly, I need to know. Has to know how the trick is done, please, Lenny, pretty please. Well, if you want to learn magic, you'll have to start by addressing me as teacher. Ugh. Fine. Please, teacher, please. <sighs> Since you asked so nicely, I'll share one little tip with you. Namely, <laughs> a student of magic cannot solely rely on I'm others so being cute in this, to reveal honestly. their secrets. You have to observe, think, and find the answers for yourself. Is that it? Ah, look at the time. We shouldn't linger here too long. Thanks again for coming to see my show. I bid you both good night. Hey, give us, uh, since we're in the habit of breaking down barriers and walls and secrets... Uh, a little bit uh for to be harbinger lore, my good my good sir. I look my good to sir. You again. <sighs> All right, fine. See ya. Shall we head back down too? <laughs> Paimon can't wait to read the steam bird tomorrow. Paimon bets Linny and Caesar will be plastered all over it. Feels a little wrong that I did this entire quest with Geo a lying traveler, <laughs> to be honest. Let's head to the steam bird's offices tomorrow morning and see what we can find out. <laughs> Oh, delightful encounter. Wait, wait, wait. A flower accessory given away by Linny at his magic shows is an arrangement of Luma Daos bells, which symbolize parting, and rainbow roses that represent passion. Parting and passion are two separate perspectives sharing the same nature. What really matters is the present that we are living in. A delightful encounter. Oh, That was, that was sweet. The, uh, 8 a.m. the next day. Okay. Man, the cutscene and then the dialogue there, chat, was so stinking good. Oh my lordy, and then Linny gave us a flower. Oh, it's a flower of friendship. I just get quest locked. I didn't, I didn't even start anything. But I'm innocent. I'm innocent. Quest done. We now have commissions in Fontaines. We continue as regularly scheduled with our friends. Oh. Friendship. I'm very sorry, Charlotte, but my sister and I are quite busy today. I'm afraid we'll have to decline this interview. Is she going to leverage oh, please, us? Oh, please, Lenny. I'll only take a moment of your time. If you would be so kind. Huh? What's happening here? I spent all night writing my piece about the Phantom Weasel. And it was going to go to print this morning, but just as dawn broke, I suddenly received news that Caesar's fiance Gemma, had contacted the guards and confessed to having been the real Phantom Weasel all along. That was quick. <clears throat> hmm? Too late, bro. <laughs> Ooh, that was quick, you say. <laughs> it 
sounds like I've got some catching up to do. I love this. Fill me in. I love what just happened. The Paimon just saying the little bit and then everything that just followed. <laughs> I love Charlotte jumping on it because Charlotte is very smart. Uh -huh. My instincts did not lead me astray. You do have something to hide. Gemma turning herself in must have something to do with Linny's performance last night. Maybe watching my high altitude escape trick reminded her of a better time with Caesar, and she could no longer ignore the voice of her conscience. Huh. Okay then. Wait, no, no, no. There must be more to it. If that's all it took for her to have a change of heart, how did it take her ten whole years? Um, well... Come on, Lenny, keep up the performance. Charlotte's journalistic spirit is burning red. We're going to have to distract her somehow. Oh, I remember now. You and Gemma were nowhere to be found after the show. What happened between you? Quick fire question. Where did you all go after the show? <laughs> oh, we went to the cemetery and Lenny did a private magic trick just for us. Actually, glad you mentioned it, because that reminds Paimon, guess what? Lenny started using rainbow roses in his trick. I love what's happening. This is so nice. The little, I love the little, like, wholesome, fun, lighthearted interactions between characters when we get that sort of stuff. Like we had with Sino, uh, Tanari, and Alhaitham, and Kaveh, or, and Kaveh, like, in the demo, and stuff like that. What? Hmm. I don't recall ever having received a rainbow rose from you myself. Is this supposed to mean that they're more important to you than your own sister? Oh, shoot! <clears throat> well, it's time for us to exit stage left. No, I, I just... Uh... What the... What now? Oh, did Paimon say something wrong again? <laughs> <laughs> this is getting pretty awkward. What do we do, Traveler? Run. <sighs> Seems like this interview wasn't meant to be. Well, never mind. There's always next time. Forgive my persistence, but when there's explosive news waiting to be found, I can't turn away. The news about Gemma has already made waves, and I'll stop at nothing to get to the bottom of it all. Apparently, one of the things she said to the guards was that her final wish is to see Lorenzo one last time. Ah, oh, there's truth. clearly a web of complicated relationships there. Can't blame me for being curious. All right, I guess I'll leave you to continue the rest of your conversation in peace. Bye for now. Bye, Charlotte. We love you. We're going to have to protect that um, girl, man. Lynette? Paimon didn't mean to... <laughs> Don't worry. I wasn't angry. I was just trying to distract her. Oh, really? Oh, thank goodness. You scared Paimon there. Ooh, smart, <laughs> Lynette. You and me both, Paimon. You and me both. At least it did the job, right? Please, take good care of that rainbow rose. I'd be really upset if you lost it. Okay, okay, Lynette, we will. Well, nothing will happen to it. Otherwise, Lynette will kill us. <laughs> sure it. We did it, ladies and gentlemen, and that's it for Linny's story quest. That was awesome. That was really good. I was a little bit worried at the beginning if we were going to end up... You know the story quests where we do a bunch of, like unrelated like an uh, we solve an unrelated problem and it never ties back to learning more about like the characters like past or heart and stuff you know what i mean chat um and so i was worried that might happen here but i had confidence with fontaine's writing so far and that they would be able to carry that same energy into this and they definitely did because the tie-in was so good Heart especially with how yo quiet chen yun i'm sorry brother i'm sorry i didn't mean it um Especially with how they tied it in at the end. That was so well done. And the character of Caesar and how it was like the only... It was a pivotal moment in Lenny and Lynette's life. And you can see the drastic impact it had. And the contrast between both uh, Lenny and Lynette and Gemma having the same atrocities done to them. But them rising above it while she was consumed by it and, and like basically became eviler than what was done to her. And then the cutscene. Oh my gosh, the cutscene. The art in it was phenomenal. Oh my lordy. And then the symbolism as well. And then the dialogue with especially Lynette's dialogue when she was tearing into Jimma was phenomenal. All of all of Lynette's little personality pieces, I absolutely adore. Also, hello, electricity. Thank you, Benjamin. Um, 
any of the tidbits we got with Lynette's personality was so great, especially at the end. Oh my gosh, she crushed it. They crushed her character. And with Lenny as well, his dialogue at the grave and his symbolism and kind of what like his trust will bring him and how it's the life they live phenomenal great stuff i would give it a hard nine out of ten chat the 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 climax of the story was so well done and so satisfying and the twist the twist was so good that was that was a twist that actually got me had me in the first half not gonna lie i did not expect the double twist i genuinely did not and that was that was pretty well done good soup man good soup but anyway that's it chat i love you to pieces youtube thank you so much for watching let me know what you thought about the story quest below and i'll see you on the next one that's it exit stage left